It was in the gloomy, smog-laden atmosphere of post-war Britain that a momentous decision was announced in the House of Commons. That a new industry had been created. Britain's nuclear energy program had begun. It was here at Springfields that the first factory was established to produce nuclear fuel. And today, Springfields is producing fuel for all of Britain's 18 nuclear power stations, as well as many overseas. In 1956, Her Majesty the Queen officially opened the world's first commercial nuclear power station at Calder Hall in Cumbria, transmitting nuclear-generated electricity to the national grid for the first time. It is with pride that I now open Calder Hall, Britain's first atomic power station. Today, nuclear fuel provides 20% of Britain's electricity and its contribution is increasing continually to reach 25% by the early 1990s. Springfields produces some 1,500 metric tons of nuclear fuel each year and is also a major exporter of nuclear fuels and technology to world markets. One of the largest employers in Lancashire, Springfields near Preston, has a workforce of some 4,000, including 200 apprentices. In its lifetime, the plant has produced around 6 million nuclear fuel elements and pins, equivalent in energy terms to approximately 700 million metric tons of coal. Nuclear power is one of today's most controversial topics. Why then is it so vital to the nation's, indeed the world's future, when other energy sources are available? Quite simply because the world's natural resources are running out and there'll come a time when nature's gifts of coal, oil and natural gas will no longer be available to us. So it's important to conserve our natural fossil fuels for other essential uses. Future generations must be protected from the consequences of energies, energy which we all take for granted in our everyday lives. Nuclear-generated electricity is cheaper than using oil or coal. It's much cleaner too and helps to provide Britain with a balanced energy policy. British Nuclear Fuels was formed in 1971 from the production group of the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority and all shares in the company are owned by the government. Nuclear fuel manufacture, uranium enrichment and the reprocessing of spent fuel are carried out by the company which employs over 16,000 people here in the Northwest. So exactly what contribution does Springfields make to this vital energy source? It all begins with uranium, which is a natural mineral, just like coal and oil, and found in many places throughout the world. It's long been used in a wide variety of industrial processes, one of the earliest being the production of coloured glass. The uranium ore is ground, processed and purified into concentrates at the mine, and it's in this form that it arrives at Springfields for further processing. At this stage, the ore concentrate contains about 75% uranium. The impurities are removed by filtering and chemical processes to achieve the absolute purity required for nuclear fuel production. The earlier first generation of British nuclear power stations used Magnox reactors, so named because of the magnesium alloy containers or cans in which the natural uranium metal rods are encased. The purified uranium metal is cast into rods which are machined to the precise diameter required. The rods are grooved and inserted into Magnox cans, which are then sealed and pressurized to form the final fuel element. At all stages, they are minutely inspected for leaks or flaws prior to packing for transportation to the nuclear power station. The more modern advanced gas coolers provide even more efficient and economical energy production. So the purified uranium is mixed with fluorine gas and then sent to British Nuclear Fuels Plant at Capenhurst near Chester for enrichment by the centrifuge method, becoming as much as four times more efficient. Back at Springfields, the enriched uranium is oxidized by a unique single-stage kiln process developed at Springfields and known as the integrated dry route, 
which had been sold to both French and United States nuclear fuel manufacturers. The resultant powder is granulated and compressed into pellets and loaded into stainless steel or zirconium alloy cans to form the fuel pins, which in turn are grouped together into the fuel assemblies. Quality assurance checks are carried out at each stage of production. The new robotic welding line is just one example of the continuous development necessary to keep pace with improved fuel designs and better standards of quality assurance. This latest design of fuel for advanced gas-cooled reactors gives improved fuel performance in that it can remain much longer in the reactor and consequently save the British Electricity Board's millions of pounds each year. The fuel is transported to nuclear power stations in metal boxes on an ordinary vehicle. There are about 2,500 of these fuel assemblies in each reactor. And one lorry load of new fuel for an advanced gas-cooled reactor power station can produce the energy equivalent to some 500,000 metric tons of coal, about 500 train loads. The uranium fuel produces heat in the reactor, the steam from which drives the turbines and generators in much the same way as a coal-fired power station to produce electricity. To give you some indication of the energy derived from both these fuel elements, one Magnox rod is equivalent to about 150 metric tons of coal and just four of these enriched uranium pellets provide enough energy to light a 100 watt light bulb for 10 years. Springfields also produces fuels for other types of reactors in use throughout the world. A substantial export business, both in nuclear fuels and various other uranium products. Supported by extensive computer services and experimental facilities, the Fuel Element Design Office has an ongoing responsibility to improve the performance and life of the fuel in a nuclear reactor. The design of all fuel and fuel components is carried out in fields. Our apprentices receive industrial training in the country, covering a full range of skilled crafts. In keeping with the company's commitment to support the local community, the apprentices have done a great deal towards the refurbishment of the windmill at Thornton. They've rebuilt and converted to electricity an old Victorian lamp column that now stands in Kirkham Marketplace. Springfields have sponsored concerts by well-known orchestras and leading choirs made donations to amateur rugby clubs and provided some £50,000 a year from lottery funds for other local projects. Another important aspect is to ensure that the public knows all about what we do at Springfields. We provide speakers for local organisations, arrange visits welcoming some 4,000 visitors to the city. This then is Springfields which continues to play a part in one of the most successful energy industries in the world. Its vital role in providing Britain's energy needs of today while continuing to add and develop to meet the needs of tomorrow's generations. <laughs>